Hello, I'm Mark Garner, the VFD Specialist for ESNE. In this video, we will be covering how to use the PowerFlex 525 Startup Wizard. The Startup Wizard within the PowerFlex 525 assists users in setting up and configuring the drive for their specific application. It simplifies the initial setup process by guiding users through a series of steps to configure the drive's basic parameters. This helps ensure that the VFD is properly configured and ready to control the motor according to the desired specifications. With that said, let's get started. Once you open CCW and you connect to your PowerFlex 525 drive, select Wizards and press Start. Once the parameters are uploaded to the PC, we can then go through the steps. As you can see here, the steps are laid out very organized for us to use. We just click Next to go to the next screen. At this point, this is the reset parameters. You can reset all the parameters to factory defaults, but retain the custom parameter group. You can reset all the settings to default, including the custom parameter group, or reset only the power parameters. In the language screen, we can select which language we want to use. For our application, we will use English. Click Next. The motor control. Senseless Vector Control SVC is the default. There are others that we can select from, such as volts per hertz, vector, PM motor, etc. But for our application, we'll keep it at SVC, which is Senseless Vector Control. Our voltage will be 230 volts, and we do not have an encoder, so we do not have feedback for this application. Our nameplate data on the motor will come directly from the motor. We're at 230 volts, 60 hertz, our motor overload current is at 2.5 amps. Our motor nameplate full load amps is 1.6 amps. Number of poles is four. Our RPM is 1725 RPM. And our motor nameplate power is 0.22 kilowatts. Click Next. This takes us to the feedback screen. If you do have an encoder installed on your application, this is where you will set it. But for our application, we'll select None. Stop mode and brake type. If we're using a dynamic brake resistor, it can be selected here, depending on the duty cycle of the brake. Or we, for our application, we will select disabled. The stop mode, we will set for ramp, clear faults. But other ones can be used, such as brake, ramp, coast, etc. This is the point where we're going to do the direction test of the motor. I'm going to put in a low frequency of 10 hertz, and I'm going to hit the start button. Just select yes to this. As you can see, the motor is starting to turn at 10 hertz. Please observe the rotation of motor because you must make a decision on the direction of the motor and can make changes. I press stop. We go back to stop frequency. The question down here is the direction of the motor rotation correct for the application? If it says no, we'll click that. Please follow safety precautions, swap the wiring for any two motor phases, and rerun this test. If I select yes, test is passed, press next to continue. This brings us to the auto tune. You have two options, static tune and rotate tune. If you're coupled to a conveyor or pump, you want to use a static tune. That means the motor will do the tune, but will not rotate. A rotate tune gives you a more thorough tune, but you must be uncoupled from your load. For this application, we will do a rotate tune. Just press rotate tune. The drive will start, and please observe the motor. It will start turning very slowly and then speed up. As you can see, the motor went to 45 hertz, and then it will slow down and stop. Once the rotate tune is complete, you'll get test completed, yes, and click next. The ramp rates and speed limits, the zero frequency is zero hertz, our max frequency is 60 hertz. This is where we set our D cell and XL, and also the S curve. Please note the S curve is zero it's a very straight line when you're excelling and deselling. 
when you add S curve, it actually softens that. We'll press next. At this point, we're going to select speed control. Where do we get our command from? The speed reference, we're going to set for 0 to 10 volts. Please note before I change this that I got a red error here. That means one of the speed references is set for the same thing. So speed reference 3 is set for Ethernet IP. No three, none of these speed references can be set for the same value. So speed reference will change it to 0 to 10 volts. And as you can see the scaling here, 0 to 10, so 0 to 100% or 0 to 10 volts, we've actually got 0 to 60 hertz. That is how we scale. Also at this point, you can look at the analog value. You can actually change it. As I'm changing, you can see it on the screen. So it's a good point to test your analog voltage. The Ethernet IP screen comes up. This is the point default it comes set up for boot P, or you can set up for parameters. Parameters is hard-coded IP address. So for our application here, we use 192.168.135. If you change it from boot P to parameters, you must reset the drive or power cycle the drive for it to take effect. Digital inputs, our stop mode was ramp clear faults. Our start source, we're going to use digital inputs. At this point, we're going to use digital input number two. I set it for three wire start. Digital input three, we're going to use it for to clear faults. But there's many options for the digital inputs. Also here, you'll see preset. These are preset frequencies if you choose to use those. And they can be edited at this point. Click Next. These are our relay outputs. They can use, be used for faults and many other functions. We have one normie open, one normie closed. Click Next. This is our opto or digital output. It can be chosen for logic, normie closed, normie open, normie closed, normie closed, whatever you desire. Click Next. Analog output. Again, depending on your application, what do you want to use it for? You can set it here. Once all the changes are complete, just hit Finish, and you're ready to run your drive. As you can see, the PowerFlex 525 Startup Wizard provides a solid foundation for efficient, reliable, and precise motor control for operators at any skill level. Please remember to consult the PowerFlex 525 manual and other relevant documentation if you need further guidance. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our ESNE TV YouTube channel for all your automation content and support needs.